You're listening to SBRLiveFM.com. My Lord was with me, and He has taken me step by step back to good health. Won't you come along this journey with me? Hi, my name is Dr. Deborah Williams, and I'm here to give you a word of encouragement, your health tip, and a prayer. Good morning, saints of God. Good morning, Claremont. We say good morning to all of Canada, Jamaica, the Caribbean, and the rest of the world. You know, God is so amazing. I'm in Jamaica. Claremont is in Canada. And God has provided the airway that we can communicate his word to the world. And this morning we say thank you, Abba, Father. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your grace, your mercy, and your love. Come the day of life, Lord, your breath is still in our bodies. We come to glorify and magnify and exalt your name. We thank you for Jesus Christ, your Son, for your Holy Spirit, and your angels who are sent to minister unto us. Lord, as we go through this program, we ask you to put your words in our mouth, Lord. Encourage your people in the word. Oh, Father, we thank you so much. The world is in darkness, but we are the light of the world. And so we pray that you will shine your light through us. So that we can be an encouragement to others to lead them to Jesus Christ, who is the Son of Righteousness, is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, my brothers and my sisters, saints of God, today is the 18th of October 2021. The year is running away fast, and we are looking forward to the return of Jesus Christ. But while we're here, we have to occupy, and we are here to teach you how to keep your hearts and your minds tuned to God and your bodies in good health. So you can prosper, even as your soul shall prosper. So those of you who heard the program last week, Dr. Deb's doing no rush this week. I'm not rushing to 15 minutes. I have at least 30 minutes. I'm going to really settle down and give you the word and give you the health tips without rushing. And I praise God for Claremont and that opportunity. This morning, Bible in Hands, we're going to be looking at a, a well-known Bible scripture, but I want to flesh it out in our time. You know, the Bible is all about encouraging us, the, 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 the works of God. But what is the application to us now in our time? We need to do application. So I'm going to be looking at the touch of faith. Our theme this morning is the touch of faith. Now, the woman with the issue of blood, many of us have heard, have read it. But I want to, I want to dig into it a little deeper this morning. Now, we will find the account of this woman with the issue of blood in Luke chapter 8, 43 to 48, Matthew 9, 20 to 22, and Mark 5, 24 to 34. But I'm going to pick the story from Dr. Luke, because he's a physician, Luke the physician. And so he kind of gives a little more details in his account, simply because he's a physician. And there's some salient points that will come out in the mind of a doctor that will come out in the mind of Mark or Matthew when they gave their version. So reading from Luke chapter 8, 43 to 48, the word of God says, And a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood um, stayed. And Jesus said, who touched me? Question. When all denied Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee and saying thou, who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody has touched me for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. 48 and last. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Praise the Lord. Now, the first thing that jumps out at me when I read that part of scripture is that it starts off by saying, A woman. 
just a woman. You know, many of us are going around the world now. We see, I'm just a woman. I'm just a man. But when you have an encounter with Jesus, you become a daughter. You become a son. It becomes personal. It becomes a relationship. Now I'm going to read a commentary on this account from our book, The Ministry of Healing by Helen G. White. The chapter is called The Touch of Faith. And I want you to listen very carefully as um, Sister White, by the power of the Holy Spirit, fleshed out what happened in this story. It starts off by saying, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Matthew 9, 21. It was a poor woman who spoke these words. A woman who for 12 years had suffered from a disease that made her life a burden. She had spent all her, her means upon physicians and remedies only to be pronounced incurable. But as she heard of the great healer, her hope revived. She thought, if only I could get near enough to speak to him, I might be healed. Jesus was on his way to the house of Jairus, the Jewish rabbi who had entreated him to come and heal his daughter. The heartbroken petition, my little daughter, lies at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, and she may be healed, as Mark 5, 23. Had touched the tender, tender, sympathetic heart of Christ, and he at once set on his way to the ruler's house. They advanced but slowly, for the crowd pressed Christ on every side. In making his way through the multitude, the Savior came there to where the afflicted woman was standing. Again and again, she had tried in vain to get near to him. Now her opportunity had come. She could see no way of speaking to him. She would not seek to hinder his slow advance, but she had heard that healing came from a touch of his garment and fearful of losing her one chance for relief, she pressed forward, saying to herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Christ knew every thought of her mind, and he was making his way to where she stood. He realized her great need, and he was helping her to exercise faith. Praise the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, oftentimes we think we're the ones pushing towards Jesus. It is Jesus who is making himself available so we can exercise faith in him. It continues to read, as he was passing, she reached forward and succeeding in barely touching the, the border of his garment. That moment, she knew that she was healed. In that one touch was concentrated the faith of her life. And instantly, her pain and feebleness disappeared. Instantly, she felt the thrill of an electric current passing through every fiber of her being. There came over her a sensation of perfect health. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. The grateful woman desired to express her thanks to the mighty healer who had done more for her in one touch than the physicians had done in 12 years, 12 long years. But she dared not. With a grateful heart, she tried to withdraw from the crowd. Suddenly, Jesus stopped and looking around, he asked, who touched me? Oh, glory to God, who touched me? My brothers and my sisters, are you touching Jesus today? In your ailment, in your anxiety, in your depression, in your bodily illness, in your emotional trauma, are we touching Jesus today? Is my question to all of us. Continue reading. Looking at him in amazement, Peter answered, Master, the multitude throng and press thee and sayest thou, who toucheth me? Jesus says, somebody has touched me, says Jesus. For I perceive that virtue, power, is gone out of me. He could distinguish, Jesus could distinguish the touch of faith from the casual touch of the careless throng. Somebody had touched him with a deep purpose 
and had received an answer. You know, in my office on a day-to-day -day basis, I have to work with very sick people. And I tell all of my clients and my patients that it is Jesus. Exodus 15, verse 26, God says, I am the Lord that healed thee. And so my responsibility as a, as a medical missionary, as a naturopathic physician, as a Christian disciple of Jesus Christ, is to let my patients understand that though I may be the caregiver, Jesus Christ is the cure giver. No human being can cure another human being. There is no doctor that can heal any human being. Doctors do their best. They diagnose, they analyze, and they will give a prescription. But Jesus Christ brings life and health and healing to the whole body, both spiritual and physical. The reading goes on to say, Christ did not ask the question for his own information. He had a lesson for the people, for his disciples, and for the woman. He wished to inspire the afflicted with hope. He wished to show that it was faith which had brought the healing power. Listen carefully, my brothers and my sisters. It is our faith that pulls virtue from Jesus. The reading goes on to say, the, woman trust, the woman's trust must not be passed by without comment. God must be glorified by her grateful confession. Christ desired her to understand that he approved her act of faith. He would not have her depart with a half blessing only. She was not to remain in ignorance of his knowledge of her suffering or of his compassionate love of his approval of her faith in his power to save to the uttermost all who come to him. Looking toward the woman, Christ insisted on knowing who had touched him. Finding concealment vain, she came forward trembling and cast herself at his feet. With grateful tears, she told him before all the people why she had touched his garment and how she had been immediately healed. She feared that her act in touching his garment had been one of presumption. But no word of censor came from Christ's lips. He spoke only words of approval. They came from a heart of love filled with sympathy for human woe. Daughter, daughter, says Jesus, gently be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. How cheering were these words in her ears. No, no fear that she had had given offense or embitterment or spoiled her joy. To the curious crowd, and listen carefully, to the curious crowd pressing about Jesus, there was imparted no vital power. I'm going to read that again. To the curious crowd, the Bible says the multitudes were thronging Jesus, but to this curious crowd pressing about Jesus, there was no imparted virtual power but the suffering woman who touched him in faith received healing so in spiritual things does the casual contact differ from the touch of faith my brothers and sisters to believe in christ merely as the savior of the world can never bring healing to the soul the faith that is unto salvation is not a mere accent to the truth of the gospel. True faith is that which receives Christ as a personal savior. It's not good enough, my brothers and sisters, to know about this Jesus who God the Father sent on earth. We got to come and have a personal interaction with him, a personal relation. We got to pull virtue from our Lord and Savior. God gave his only begotten son that I, by believing in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 When I come to Christ according to his word, I am to believe that I receive his saving grace. The life that I now live, I am to live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2 verse 20 Finally, it says, Many hold faith as an opinion, but saving faith is a transaction. 
by which those who receive Christ join themselves in covenant relationship with God. A living faith means an increase of vigor, a confiding trust by which through the grace of Christ, the soul becomes a, a, a conquering power. Faith is a mightier conqueror than death. If the sick can be led to fix their eyes in faith upon the mighty healer, we shall see wonderful results. It will bring life to the body and it will bring health to the soul. So as I look at that account in the Bible, we've got to remember, my brothers and my sisters, our mandate, our constitution, our guideline, our, our roadmap is the Bible. And when we go and we read these things, it's not just to entertain us and say, oh, this woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, but to now say, Lord, as you did for this woman, did for, do for me. Lord, teach me how to be faithful. Lord, I want to pull virtue from you. Lord, I want to be healed. Last week in my office, I, I, I dealt with so much cancer cases. I tell you, Claremont, the cancer cases are coming in so much, right? And they're getting younger and younger, 17 years of age, 25, breast cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer. And we, 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 we do this program and other programs like this to teach God's children that we are causing the cancer because of how we're eating, how we're drinking, how we're living, how we're dealing with stress. We've got to turn off the world and turn on Jesus. All right, guys, that was our word of encouragement. Now, let's go to our health tip. This morning, we are going to speak on the topic, leaky gut syndrome. Yes. What are some of the symptoms of leaky gut syndrome? Recurring pain in the intestinal tract, resulting in a variety of complications. Causes. This is a common, seldom recognized problem in which the intestinal lining becomes hyperpermeable. Large spaces develop between the cells of the intestinal wall and bacteria, toxins, and food leak through and toxic materials, including bacteria, fungi, parasites, and fat, enter into the bloodstream. This strains the liver's ability to detoxify the blood. Various gastrointestinal disorders can result, including Crohn's disease, colitis, migraine, eczema, and many immune system problems. The causes of leaky gut syndrome include poor diet. We have spoken over and over for the last several months on this program about what constitutes poor diet, the excessive meat, eating of meat, all the saturated fat, the processed food, the white rice, white flour, white sugar, right, the sodas, the coffee, all of these things we have been telling you guys to get them out of your diet. The overuse of antibiotics. I find now doctors nowadays, they're just writing up copious amounts of antibiotics from babies to the old person. And all the antibiotics is destroying the friendly flora in your gut, destroying your good healthy bacteria, opens the way for le leaky gut syndrome. Then the use of alcohol, caffeine, and any product that has caffeine in it. Then we have the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. They will lead to leaky gut syndrome. All the chemicals, the, from the dye in the hair to the chemicals in the makeup to the nail polish, to the things that we are mopping our floor with, the overuse of bleach, all of these chemicals, mold in the house and fungi, right? And please, and please let me warn you guys. If you see a fruit spoiling, do not cut off half of the spoiled fruit and eat the rest because that spoiled fruit could have fungi growing on it. And when you eat a half that is not spoiled, it's already contaminated the whole fruit. Throw it away. Same thing for greens. You gotta wash your greens very carefully. When you're storing your, your peas and beans and your rice and your corn and your corn meal, please ensure you're storing them in glass containers, sealed properly. Or you can have fungi growing in these things and it can lead to leaky gut syndrome. Enzyme deficiency, parasite infection, fatigue, low grade fever, frequent flus and colds can also contribute to this problem. Infection, food intolerance, and also rashes on the skin. Now, some other causative diseases are like AIDS, liver disease, cystic fibrosis, asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, 
um, lupus, chronic fatigue syndrome, and fibromyalgia. All of these can be causative diseases because of the leaky gut syndrome. What are some of the natural remedies that we use? First of all, like the woman with the issue of blood, we got to reach out to Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Our first thing is a day of fasting and prayer. We seek the Lord. We ask the Lord for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And then now we turn to Dr. Debs and follow the instructions and the program. Now, the following vegetable juice combinations will help to rid the body of leaky gut syndrome. We can do a juice with carrot, parsley, and cabbage. That's an excellent juice for helping with leaky gut syndrome. I have another one that I give my patients. It's carrot, parsley, cabbage, turmeric, and ginger. Another combination is the ginger, the parsley, the garlic, carrot, and celery, right? So with a juice extractor, we extrapolate the juice. We don't use the fiber because when you have the juice without the fiber, it gets into your system faster. If the fiber is in it, like a, a, a juice smoothie, like a vegetable smoothie, where we blend the vegetables and we keep the fiber, well, that will take longer to digest. But in this particular case, when we're dealing with leaky gut syndrome, we want just the juice, right? We're going to fast. We recommend a fast for about two to three days of just doing the juicing, water and herbal teas. But the first day of your fast is a day of fasting and prayer. It is not the juice and the herbs healing you, it's God. So we've got to acknowledge him and invite him into our bodies to be a part of our healing mandate. When you're cooking your grains, please cook your grains very slowly. The grains are high in enzymes, vitamins, minerals, and proteins. So we don't lose the enzymes when we slow cook our grains over a period of maybe two to three hours, very low heat, right? Drink plenty of liquid, pure water. We can do fruit juices, but please do not mix too many fruits together. Watermelon juice is very good. The pineapple juice is very good. So try not to do more than two juices together if you're going to do your fruit juice. Almond milk. I beg you, I implore you, learn to make your own almond milk at home. I don't so recommend the ones in the supermarket because they have preservatives added to them. And it's mostly 98% water. It's less than 2% almond. To make your own almond milk, it's very simple. You buy your almonds, raw almonds, never roasted. You soak them overnight, one cup. Next morning, you wash them off, put them in the blender. Add four cups of water, one tablespoon of honey as your, as your preservative because honey is a natural preservative. And there you go. You have a homemade, healthy almond milk for the entire family. The almond milk can also be blended with fruits. So you can make a lovely almond, banana, papaw, or almond milk with strawberries and berries. And it's a lovely smoothie for helping you with leaky gut syndrome. Buckwheat and millet can be eaten for breakfast or for lunch. Right? They are nourishing and easily digested, but please ensure you're cooking them properly. Eat steamed vegetables. Also have your fruits, any wide variety of fruits. Eat whole grains, nuts, and legumes. Please remember, take your probiotic supplement first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. Plant enzymes. You can buy your plant digestive enzymes at the health food store, papain and bromelain. But remember, papain comes from the papaya, and bromelain comes from the pineapple. So a lovely juice fix is to blend the pineapple and the papaw and consume it. But if you can't do that on a regular basis and you're having leaky gut syndrome, you can go ahead and purchase a digestive enzyme at, um, at the health food store, right? We want to also get our vitamin B complex. And you want to take about 100 milligrams per day, vitamin C, 2,000 milligrams, two or three times a day. We get our antioxidants from kale and garlic and our fruits, right? Our strawberries, our grapes. So we want to eat lots of those dark green leafy vegetables, our broccoli, spinach, the calcium. Calcium, the best natural source of calcium is sesame seeds, right? Or we have tahini, which is the roasted um, sesame seed uh, paste. It's excellent to replace butter. We want to take our magnesium supplement and we want to get our essential fatty acids from our flax seed or the flaxseed oil, or you can get your wheat germ or purchase the wheat germ oil and take one tablespoon twice a day. Our seaweeds, spirulina, Irish moss, our um, chlorella, um, uh, those are awesome seaweeds and they're dulse. They're excellent, health. 
excellent for helping with your, your healing your gut. And finally, helpful herbs such as aloe vera. I love to take aloe vera, my brothers and my sisters. I just take the aloe vera about four inches. I blend it in about four ounces of water, coconut water or orange juice. And I strain it because I blend it in the skin. Oh, it is healing for the body. So we have the aloe vera. You can take your grape seed extract, the padiaco, the cat's claw, the licorice root, slippery elm, comfrey, and golden tea. And if you are suffering with leaky gut syndrome and you want one-on-one -on -one consultation, just contact my office at 876-974-8813 or 878-8867. And we will work with you to help you come out, get over this particular disease. So there we have it, our words of encouragement, our help it. Now let's close in prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, I'm so happy for this morning that I don't have to rush for the 15 minutes. And here I was thinking that I was limited. When you had the platform open, I want to lift up Claremont and his team in a very special way this morning. Lord, I want to present Claremont and his family to you. I want to ask you, Lord, to visit his family, his children. And anywhere in his family where any of his children are being attacked by any disease, I ask you this morning, in the name of Jesus, Father, to heal them. He is your servant, Lord. And by through the instrumentality of this radio program, we are, we are reaching thousands of people across the world. So though borders may be closed, and though airports may be closed, and though we're getting restrictions that we can't travel because we refuse to get this poison pumped into our bodies, but nonetheless, Lord, your word cannot be bound. The airways will take your, your words into the hearts and the homes of your people. I ask you to bless those who work with Claremont at the radio station, Lord. And we pray for all the Christian radio stations and the Zoom presentations and the Facebook and the WhatsApp. Because, Lord, we are using all the means necessary to spread the word of Jesus Christ to the world who is in darkness. Thank you so much for my family. Thank you, Lord God, for all your children in the family of God. Bless, anoint, and consecrate us. And as we go through this day, Lord, may your Holy Spirit truly be poured into the hearts of your children. May your angels take us safely from place to place. And thank you, great God, for your blessing upon us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Amen. Well, uh, can you hear me? Yes, you can. I, 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 I've known something that you've been doing for me every Wednesday. Um, you, yourself and your team have been praying for me. And um, I, I want to give back some of what we call good news. Praise the Lord. Let's hear um, it. <laughs> the good news is um, that as of this past, um, this past Wednesday, Tuesday, actually, because Monday was a holiday. We have, I have, I'm now getting my sleep at night because now I'm working um, 11 to 7. So you've been praying Praise that the my, Lord. my time you? would change. So it has changed. And, and we, we, I thank God for that because, you know, sometimes, sometimes we pray and we don't really believe that God can. And, and, um, but I know God can. For a matter of fact, my son and I were talking and uh, I said to him, you know, this is what I'm doing right now. He said, but dad, how did you get a job so fast? I says, you know, when you pray, you must pray believing in God can. Amen. Amen. So <laughs> he's like, wow, that was fast. I'm like, yeah, it is. But, you know, God is doing his thing with me because I, I said to God, if it, not only that, too, one of the things that um, I, I told God, you told me not to take this vaccine. And because I they are now mandating this vaccine at my workplace, um, I said, God, you want me to battle this? You want me to take this? What's the deal? So let me know what it really is. And long and short is, within three weeks, I was out of that that former job into a new job where that is not required. And, and you know, I'm looking around and I'm recognizing how many people that have taken the vaccine that have passed away, including um, the fully vaccinated Colin Powell, who died, oh. I think, yesterday, age 84, of complication of COVID. Oh my right? God! Okay. So, <laughs> again, I am not coming against anybody who wants to take it. That's your deal. You do your right. thing. You know, um, I, I I didn't even take the flu shot because I was allergic to it. Anyways, I take it, I get sick. So I said, nope, I'm gonna do the natural stuff, and that works for me. And I've been healthy ever since. Amen. Came on this morning. We just want to thank the Lord again. I, I wanted to just emphasize what you said. We're not forcing any our, our beliefs on anyone. Yeah. 
If they want to do it, they do it. But we have been convicted by the Lord not to do it, and we are holding that stand. Correct. And we are seeing the Lord's blessing upon us yes. by going natural because we have a natural immune system that keeps us healthy. If we do what we need to do to keep it healthy. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, and it's true because we we tend to want to you know um, you know thinking well this is the best thing for us um, how is it the best thing lasts a certain period of time then you have to take a booster shot then you have to take a booster shot after then they have to take it when the Lord give you natural things to keep your body healthy let me tell you something added to to what I used to do before and then going on a new start changing my diet. Uh, if anything happens to me now, that's what the Lord wants. If if, mm -hmm. if 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 I should get sick now with all what I'm doing and go home, that's what the Lord wants. But apart yeah. from that, my body is totally healthy as far as I'm concerned. I try my best to do what I need to do for my health, um, you know, and, and, um, and, and I, I, I take it from there. Uh, and I'm seeing the evidence of it. I haven't had a cold now since 2017 if i can say that correctly i had a cough sometime in 2019 that lasted a brief period of time and i you know mm -hmm. but other than that um doing what i do the, my vitamin d's my c's my zinc my um, magnesium the whole nine yards doing that for so long you know and this is why i really was happy to have this kind of a program in coming in on my morning show that people would recognize that it, it's not what the other people say that oh naturopathic stuff is not that great it is, it is. i'm a living proof of it amen and so am i clear <laughs> I'm a, i am now a 10 year cancer survivor amen no, amen no, no radiation did not cut off my breast simply went on god's new star platform right. and i've worked with thousands of people around the world and they have regained health and are maintaining health, trusting in the Lord and taking care of their bodies. Amen, amen, amen. amen. And, and I hope you guys, it, just in case we were talking about, Le Dr. Dr. Debs was talking about leaky gut this morning. And if you missed it on, from, ra from a radio standpoint and you want to go back and hear it, you can always go to Streaming Praise Radio on YouTube and find it. And Deborah Williams, um, YouTube, YouTube channel Deborah Williams. Deborah Williams and you can also find it there as well what is your website um, I, I was looking at this LHF oh, Ministries don't use that one that, don't use that one this is my name it's www.debrawilliamsja.com okay okay Deborah Williams okay. Deborah was, Williams ja.com let me look for it right now okay it's the same website I have two different ways to get to it and I find the name is the easier one to remember DebraWilliamsJA.com. All right, there you go, Debra Williams. But it takes you back to the same IHFMinistries.org. So just use DebraWilliamsJA.com, and it takes you right back to the same. It's the same website, anyways. But Debra, just to remember, DebraWilliamsJA.com. Easy to remember. You can't miss that. DebraWilliamsJA.com. And you will find all the wonderful things there. You can find out to contact Deborah Williams, Dr. Deborah Williams as well. All the, in, all the information is there too as well. Uh, you can email her. You can send a text message. Whatever it is. Just to consult with her to know exactly how to do what you need to do. Again, uh, her YouTube channel is Deborah Williams. Uh, and YouTube channel. And Deborah Williams JA dot com for the website and we want to thank you so much dr debs for sharing uh what god has given to you to share with the rest of the world my pleasure god bless you all have a wonderful day Jesus. you too god bless you bye-bye much love, much love. Much love. That's Dr. Deborah Williams right here on the Praise Life Morning Show, giving you the full-blown thing now. We're going to go full-blown. We shall take a time and minister to us 